story is about the Koch brothers. We have uh, the, the Koch brothers talk they, to us. No, number, number 41, and they have the second largest private company in America. Tell us about them. That's right. I mean, we, we looked inside Koch industry, so, so Charles and David Koch uh, brought us inside. We had our, our writer, Dan Fisher, spent uh, a good amount of time going, traveling throughout the Koch empire, and they, it was our, their first interview since the election. I mean, if you want to understand the politics of the Kochs, you have to understand the business of the Kochs. I mean, these are people who work, they're not working on day or months or an election cycle kind of uh, worldview. They're working in decades. If you look at what, what they built, what Charles Koch specifically has built over 50 years. He's been CEO of Koch Industries almost 50 years. He started when he was very young, uh, inheriting from their father. Uh, they're, they have the long game. And so they have the long game in business. Yep. Uh, and their company is incredibly profitable and incredibly influential. But they're using that same philosophy yeah. uh, in politics. And so, I mean, you know, David Koch's telling us, I mean, people uh, are just thinking, okay, the Koch's, uh, that didn't quite work uh, in yeah. 2012, so that's it for them. David Koch tells us, we're going to keep doing this in terms of the political stuff until we stop breathing, yeah. until okay. our last yeah. breath. Right. So, so this, the, the, the Koch that, narrative is that, not going yeah. anywhere. All right, great. Uh, yes. And Mark, uh, fascinating, uh, the Koch brothers' philosophy as far as politics go. They're going to stay Thank at you. this until they stop breathing. Well, there's a real debate and a real split now within that Republican donor community. The, the Kochs are in it for the long haul, they say, and that's, uh, that's one view. But there are a lot of other people who come out of this cycle pretty skeptical. You know, did their money, did they get a return on investment? For what they did and it's going to be interesting to see which of the presidential candidates which of the super PACs which ones can keep uh, their interest and keep their faith that if they invest their millions and billions that uh, they're going to get a return uh, in the next election joe conison not since uh, the collapse of pets.com have more <laughs> unwise investments uh, been exposed um, it's like warren buffett always says when the tide goes out you can see who's naked uh, look at Sheldon Adelson. He contributed so much to so many Republican candidates. At the end of the day, only one of his candidates won. The well, Koch you know, brothers as well. But they're they're coming back. They're going to stay involved. And if I were a Democrat uh, or a Democratic leader, I'd say that's a great thing because they are fueling a split in the Republican Party right now. Their organization, Americans for Prosperity, a lot of what they've done over the last few years has created a, a great sort of... Uh, sense of unreality among Republicans. In what it, way? It, well, they push forward the Tea Party, which is now a huge problem for the Republican leadership, and, and they say they're going to keep doing that. So from the Democratic point of view, and that's actually a good thing. I'm not saying that all, everything they've done has been unsuccessful. They've uh, supported a lot of important institutions on the right they sort of, well, and, But, all, but and, right and now... also a lot of important institutions in New York as well. <coughs> Lincoln yes, Center Lincoln Center. Center. Oh, their philanthropy has great, been great. Great philanthropy. But that's very separate from the political side. Right. On the political side, they are a problem for Republicans right now because they're pushing the most radical uh, perspective on this. They're still at war with the president. They're separate from other people in the business community. You could see yesterday when the president went to the business roundtable and uh, got a warm reception because people there don't want to go over the no, cliff. No, no, define, right. define radical, because when you say radical, you're not talking about radical and radical social Radical is more, more tax cuts for the rich, you, you, the richest people like them, uh, as opposed to raising taxes on the 2%. I mean, in other words, they are very much apart from the national consensus and from a growing consensus within their own party about what has to be done to save the republic. They, they share the philosophy of, say, club for growth, right? Uh, roughly, yes, I would say. And, you know, maybe not in every detail, but that's basically where that they are correct. good philosophy to share. Let's well, talk about Hillary like it, Clinton. But I do like No, I don't like it. I love it. You love it. I believe in freedom. Uh, yeah, it just makes me feel good. Freedom in the morning. <laughs> oh, very nice. Just, you just need to have the right candidates to carry that message. Well, Hillary that, Clinton that actually done. believe that freedom works for 100 percent of Americans and not just 50. I hope they stick with America. that. I hope they stick with that, Joe, because uh, you know the, then a more sensible perspective is bound to grow. Uh, look, you said yourself the polls are very bad for Republicans right now, and it's right. in that below 30 percent, 28 percent or less of the hardline Republican right position that the Koch brothers are basically financing. I and mean, that's so, where that's where the, the support for that comes from. Let's agree to disagree and go on to Hillary Clinton. Yes. <laughs>